All right, hello everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about Jupiter conjunct Rahu. We did a previous video talking about Jupiter with K2. Now we're gonna talk about Jupiter with Rahu. Now Rahu and K2 are the lunar nodes, and these are the points, the mathematical points where the eclipses occur. So any planet or thing that is significant factor that is near them in the astrology chart is going to basically have a lot of qualities that are going to be eclipsed or you know there are going to be parts of it that just don't quite connect for the person and they'll have some issues there. I remember when I was first learning about astrology once I got into Vedic astrology the person uh, who read my chart was able to really hone in on very very personal and specific things that you just wouldn't have seen without understanding the lunar nodes and if you were doing other systems of astrology that don't emphasize it. But in Vedic philosophy, it's all about reincarnation and karma. And that's the whole reason you're looking at a birth chart, is it is a road map of the soul. It is a road map of your many past lives. And since this culture was so focused on reincarnation, it really makes a lot of sense that they have specialized on Rahu and Ketu and reading Rahu and Ketu because they are so helpful in understanding your, your past life karma as well as your ancestral karma. They are the factors that you want to read to understand your ancestral karma. Alright, so Jupiter Rahu. This is commonly called the Guru Chandala Yoga. This is, which means like an outcast guru. So this is a, a, a yoga for being an outcast guru. That says it all right there. This is a yoga that is about like uh, how to how to explain it like Guru Chandala this basically means that this is a yoga indicating when you have Jupiter and Rahu conjunct your philosophy might be really out there or not might not fit into the box or you might not have any philosophy or you might not have as many morals or Jupiter things in within your natural Dharma and being and so you will make a lot of people upset in your culture and your society basically so Jupiter represents like culture and society and so you get Rahu there it means someone who hasn't really been experienced with a lot of that so they will offend their culture or they will offend the they will they will be forced to be an outcast you see like someone who has to be a, a someone who's just on the fringe of society more so um you know, uh, Mick Jagger has Jupiter Rahu. He was one of the first rock and rollers, Rolling Stones. You know, this was a very, this was not liked by most people at the time. You know, he was like an outcast in some ways, but at the same time, he was like a leader uh, with that Jupiter energy. Um, Jim Morrison, Madonna, a lot of other people who are like pioneers or rock stars will have this placement. Um, the way I like to talk about it in a modern interpretation Guru Chandala, well, yeah, that takes a little while to understand all that. If you're looking at it in a modern placement, uh, a modern interpretation, I like to call this the single mother placement. I hate to say it, you know, that's not fun, but that gets straight to the point. If you're a woman and you have this, your statistics and your odds of being a single mother are skyrocketed. I'm sorry, but they are. Uh, because Jupiter represents for a woman her husband and her children and also luck and fortune and guru jupiter represents a lot of things for us and especially for a woman so when jupiter is with rahu it shows there's major issues with this with these affairs in your karma basically to put it very simply i don't know if how many of you guys are watching this uh either men or women who have jupiter conjunct rahu you have probably had a lot of struggles with husband if you're a woman with children either way with your education with wealth or with having being in a flow of abundance and with just being good and these are all Jupiterian issues um, one of the things that uh, the other reason I call it a single mother placement is because yeah like basically this is saying that one really has to focus on Jupiter like their long time long-term vision and their long-term Dharma and so if Rahu's there, it's showing there's a weakness there. So you're more likely to attract a guy who's not right for you in the long term, hence being a single mother. And then with Jupiter and Rahu, you're also more likely to have a surprise pregnancy because it's like, oh, the gods are trying to teach one in this life, like, 
you really want to think more about uh, Jupiter and establishing like a wise, fortunate path in life and not just doing what one wants to do. You know what I mean? Um, based on any other impulse. Um, so this placement actually has a bad reputation in India, but there's also a lot of good to it as well because the person is also the same reason that they offend their culture and the teachers and the institutions and you know they'll offend their church when they're growing up or they will not be able to be a part of their church or temple or religion that they're brought up into very common in that same way the good side is that they are not able to be held back by social norms and by cultural traditional stigmas that maybe aren't good and so some of these Jupiter Rahu people are usually some of the first people to break uh, from a tradition that is not maybe that wholesome and is not really that good. So they can be very pioneering in that regard. So uh, like Samuel Hanuman, the guy who founded homeopathy is actually has Jupiter Rahu conjunct and he was like a really brilliant genius man um, and had a really a, a incredible ability to perceive um, and his the systems of medicine that were working in his time weren't really cutting it, you know? So if he had just gone with the traditional approach he wouldn't have uh, been able to save so many lives, you know? So this Jupiter Rahu is great for getting people to think outside of the box, um, but they actually have to learn to oftentimes, like, pay a little bit more attention to uh, culture and the bigger picture Jupiter issues, right? Um, one thing is, like, Jupiter kind of has to do with your destiny and fate and... So these people, actually, if you have Jupiter with K2 or Jupiter with Rahu, either one, you're very more likely to disrespect other people's destinies. And you don't want to do that. <laughs> so that's one of those things where if you get caught up in other people, oh, he's doing the wrong thing, he shouldn't be living this life, don't get caught up in all that. It's very easy to, to project because you're not happy with your destiny and, and overall path to project on others and just spend a lot of time wasted on others. So that's important to avoid that with displacement. Um, and like I was saying, yeah, like in India, this is just makes people very irreligious. Um, not wanting to do the Dharma. Um, these people eventually, though, are destined to kind of go towards Jupiter and to see the big picture and to become more spiritual, um, have faith in God, things like that. They can actually have a fear around religion, around anything spiritual, around being good or doing good. And they will want to come off, especially if they're men, because Jupiter is a male planet. So if you're a woman, you project this more. You see, you suppress, the, you'll still want to come off as like really good and more good and noble and dharmic than you really are. But more so, you're going to manifest it in the man you attract. And if you're a man, you're going to straight up just fake it. Like, you're not going to, it doesn't work the same way. Whereas if you're a man, you're just going to create a false appearance and not suppress that. And you're going to basically uh, present a false image to people that centers around that sign and, and planetary issues that Jupiter deals with in your chart. So that's because the person's really afraid to be good with Jupiter and Rahu there. Um, being good has wounded them earlier in life. Um, the last thing they want is for others to know that they aren't that good. And the last thing they want is for others to know how hollow some of their Jupiter, some of their beliefs, or some of their, you know, Jupiterian things are. My, my teacher Ernst always talks about this guy who was like the head minister at the Self-Realization Fellowship, this big yoga uh, ashram in LA. And he 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 came to him for a reading and then later found out that he was like promising three other girls that he was in love with them and all this stuff you know what i mean and just not being the real person that you are up front you know so you can actually get a lot of people who want to be spiritual leaders with displacement and as soon as you see this placement if they are not people who are hardcore working on their shadow and working on themselves and this is not like they're you know they're not like 15 years deep into this you probably don't want to follow them i'm just going to say that um but again, they can make they can become amazing people when they've been through all the stuff that Rahu's put them through, when they've been through that jungle, like Samuel Hanuman. It just takes time with Rahu things. 
Um, so as a woman, one can attract men who don't want to have kids, but they'll act like that, or they'll act like they want to marry and have the long-term commitment, and there it's something about it doesn't follow through. Um, the men don't want to give the women what they want, and they don't want to be real men. And as a woman, if you're with someone with this, you got to just leave them and just keep saying no and keep trying to find more and better and better men. So this is a, like a trial and error placement. If you're a woman or if you're a man with other Jupiterian issues like wealth or education, you have to just keep trying and trying and just you get wounded and with some dude and then you heal, you go through healing. Then when the weather's right, you got to try again. You know what I mean? And don't settle for just don't yeah because there can be a fear of not being able to have any man so one will just settle for whatever they can get really quickly and that's like not the best way to go you know if you if you can wait and just keep working on your jupiter yourself your purpose your sense of dharma and purpose and having faith in god you'll uh, and you say no to that guy you'll attract a better guy and i'm saying this from experience so many times i've seen that um, so don't settle for less. Keep searching in that jungle of Rahu, you know? Um, but yeah, these people uh, can be susceptible to gambling, like get rich quick schemes because Jupiter is with wealth and your abundance, like wanting to have that so bad, they're, they're not afraid they can do it the right way, so they'll want to get these get, get rich quick things. Um, and that can end up just hurting them more in the long run. So Jupiter is like the power of money and the power of a man. For in a woman's life and so a woman that has this can just be get a little too crazy about those two things at times it's really really helpful to get a reading um, to sort out sort things out in that area um, yeah like men with this can be so afraid of not having enough abundance and money that they will cheat and swindle people to get it you know um, so a lot of these like really fake men that are hustling in the business world to just try to get money. Usually their Jupiter is afflicted in other ways, but Jupiter with Rahu is one way to do it. Um, and uh, sometimes they can actually be challenged to either sell out, make a bunch more money, or to be the real man they're meant to be. And hopefully they go the, with being the real man they're meant to be. And then later the abundance will follow them <clears throat> when they're ready for it and when they're merited for it. Um, so like uh, someone like this, Alan Watts, uh, if I get time I'll show his chart after this, but Alan Watts is someone who is a big philosopher. He's one of the first books I ever read about Zen Buddhism was written by him. Really amazing perceptive ability to understand Eastern philosophy and break it down for Westerners. But did he actually live these philosophies? He understood yoga, Hinduism, Buddhism, everything I'm saying, he was so brilliant, but did he actually like apply it in his life? No. He was like a drunk, he was a womanizer, he had tons of illegitimate children. He's just like kind of like at the end of his life, you know? And so that's a Jupiter Rahu person who didn't really follow through with what they could have been. He also had a lot of fall from height Sagittarius stuff in his chart. Um, if you watched my previous videos, you know what I mean about that. Um, Jerry Sandusky, the guy who was uh, like this, oh my god, this guy is such a perfect example of this on an extreme bad level. Don't think like, if, it, if you see this commonly, it's not going to be this bad, but do a little research. Jerry Sandusky was this huge like football coach or wrestling coach, I forget what it was. He was a huge coach in one of those schools up in New England in the Northeast area, and he was like worshipped. And one day one, one, someone walked in and just saw him. Uh, I can't even talk about it on here, but just go and read about him on the internet. I don't want to talk about it because uh, I can't with the guidelines the way YouTube is now, but um, he was not who he said he was. And it, it shocked the New England culture, the football like culture around all that so much because he was like such a beloved hero. And then all of a sudden he's going to jail for being the biggest creep on the planet or you know what I mean it was like people couldn't believe it they were like rioting and stuff at the school um, but it was real and a lot of people knew about it for a long time so that's Jupiter Rahu on an extreme level um, 
another one was Dylan Roof, the kid who did that crazy shooting in Charleston where I live at that church, the Charleston church shooting. I've done an Omen video about that. If you're curious, Omens of the Moon, check out that video, but where I talked about my personal experience as an astrologer when that morning that that happened, the Omens that I saw. But um, that, that kid was also someone who had crazy beliefs that didn't fit with our culture and he took it into his own hands um, and yeah he's he's gone now he got put to death you know so that's Jupiter Rahu right there didn't have a long term uh, didn't pan out well for him in the long term um, so there's some pretty extreme examples of this stuff uh, Charlie Sheen like a very Jupiter Rahu example um, with it, when it comes to women I think it's more people that I've personally had clients so I don't want to speak about any of those people, but maybe you have had people that you know have had similar issues. I know a lot of uh, men's charts that that have this, <clears throat> that have these sort of placements, um, and they have been just like what I described earlier. So, uh, yeah, I hope that helps you guys understand a little bit about Jupiter conjunct Rahu. It is not a placement that is totally bad because it means you're meant to work on Jupiter, you know, and Jupiter's a good thing. So you can actually have a lot of luck, a lot of breakthroughs. You can do pioneering, creative things that that others can't do. But there are the issues that I mentioned beforehand. So <laughs> those are the things to watch out for with displacement. All right. Thanks, you guys. Okay, so now we're going to look at a couple of quick examples of Jupiter conjunct Rahu. Here's a chart of Nikola Tesla. So you see this guy was very, very pioneering and not connected like to his culture. This guy was a very, very different and unique soul that didn't really fit into any of the traditional cultures of his time. Um, he had Jupiter Rahu and so he ended up being very, very innovative and very, very creative. And he is the only reason that we are able to talk right now and that we are able to use smartphones and, you know, interact with, with one another. And he literally predicted back in his day, in like the 20s, he predicted that in the future, you'll be able to have a small handheld device that fits in your pocket and you'll be able to know the news going on in the world anywhere at any point within a few minutes and you'll be able to talk to someone. He's literally predicting exactly what a smartphone was. Um, and so he was a real visionary and that's that Jupiter and Aries, the sign of the, you know, being a visionary. Now I talked about how, you know, it's the person can be afraid to do the right thing. You're going to have to, 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 if you want to really predict that you need to know all about the Avashas and dignity and every other, everything else in astrology and be a really good astrologer. So, when you have Jupiter, see, this is how you'll understand why the friends and enemies of Jupiter are the way they are, because Jupiter's enemies are Mercury and Venus. Those are the planets that are about, like they rule the air signs, like socializing and networking and the earth signs, like making something, making money, making a concrete thing. Real goodness can't be measured in those ways, you know, and it can't be pinned down socially. So what we're trying, you see this, our society trying to do that now. Oh, if we just make sure people don't say certain words around other people, everything's okay. And it's, it's just not, if you have a really awake Jupiter, you know that's not the case. Um, and there's no sort of set of rules you could make that would make people innately want to be good people more. Um, and goodness can't really be coerced that easily. Um, but anyway, so, so Jupiter in a fire sign or in a water sign, he's going to be in the sign of his friends. He's going to be in the sign of, you know, Mars. If it's in Aries or Scorpio, or if it's in Cancer or Leo, he's in the sign of the moon or the sun. These are his friends' signs. So he's delighted. So he feels like he can do the right thing. He's going to be less scared. So if you got your Jupiter in, um, you know, in a delighted of Austria where he's helped by friends, then it's going to be easier for you to stand up and do the right thing rather and not you know be afraid of doing it and want to act good and and you know create these kind of attitudes and issues and complexes that i talked about just earlier so jupiter rahu right on the ascendant for nikola tesla this is a, a good example of someone who really did a lot of good in the world um i wrote an article about nikola tesla a few years ago if you guys are interested to know a lot more about the rest of his chart 
Um, now, here's an exa another example, Alan Watts. Um, Alan Watts had his ruling planet, Jupiter, in the third house with the second cusp and with Rahu. Um, Jupiter in Aquarius does good, but not as good as in Aries. Um, and uh, it's in the third house, which isn't really an ideal house. Um, you'll also notice that he has Venus on the Ascendant, which is the one uh, difficult planet for a Sagittarius Ascendant to have. And um, it is afflicted by Saturn and by a waning moon. And when you have afflictions in Sagittarius, there's more likely to have a fall from a height. Go and watch my Sagittarius video to get filled in on why that is. But basically, yeah, so Jupiter Rahu, he was kind of not really the philosopher or wise guru that you might have thought. Like I thought he was just from reading his books as a young kid, like The Way of Zen, unbelievably great book. If you wanted to, if you want to learn about Zen and stuff, that was just a wonderful book and uh, really helps you get a feel for the flavor of Zen. And I just kind of assumed he would be so much more enlightened, you know? And then I like learned more about his life and his history and read about him. I was like, oh my God, poor guy, you know? And so that was what made me want to look at his birth chart. Because um, he was a womanizer and he had, you know, he did still do a lot of good, like, you know what I mean? But it was just some of that mixed stuff that goes on with Jupiter and Rahu. And then now we come to Charlie Sheen, <laughs> which uh, if you don't know about Charlie Sheen, you Go and look him up. But uh, he kind of just went crazy. And was just like, I'm just going to do whatever I want and, you know, hook up with porn stars and do a bunch of drugs and just go crazy. Um, and <laughs> look at that Rahu Jupiter right on the Ascendant, you guys. It kind of says it all, doesn't it? So he's a good example of the Guru Chandala, the outcast guru. Or the, he, see, he's a, culture, he's a role model. He's a cultural role model, Charlie Sheen. So he is a Jupiter figure. It's also his Atmakarika with that Rahu and see how it's in, see how it's in an air sign. It's starved. See, this Jupiter is not as good as Nikola Tesla's. This Jupiter is in an enemy sign where he's really starved by Mercury. So there you go. And it's also starved by Venus too, just so you know, because of that really strong Venus there. So his ability to be good and think about goodness is just skewed by babes and, you know, luxury and lust and, and drugs and all these kind of, all these things are throwing off his Jupiter. But um, yeah, so anyway, so that's, that's just a little uh, a kind of a fun example you guys can think about more on your own. And then um, this is an, a not very pleasant example either. This is Dylan Roof. Um, he was the guy who had that Charleston church shooting where he shot a bunch of people in church, like he worshiped with them and prayed with them. And then at the end, just shot them all except like two. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty awful thing. And you can see this Jupiter with Rahu. It's in Scorpio, which is a good dignity. But you'll see he also has a Venus with K2 thing. Uh, so he's got both the plants of being good, like the Brahmins, the goodness plants. Venus, Jupiter are caught up in the twistedness of the lunar nodes. And they're both eclipsed. Um, and then, uh, you can see how Mars, his Atmakarika violence and stuff is really starved by Mercury, a debilitated Mercury, which is no good, and Saturn. It's like starved in a lot of ways. And the Lord of it, Pisces, was delighted is that twisted Jupiter. So, yeah, very twisted beliefs this kid had. But, um, but you know, like I said, there are some some better ones. I didn't show you guys show you guys the uh, founder of homeopathy, Hanuman's chart. Um, but there are a lot more. And like I said, there's a lot of famous people who have been very influential and done things. But you'll see some is interesting issues with things that represent Jupiter. Oh, like the one of the Wachowskis, because they both became uh, transgender. And one of them has Jupiter Rahu as their ruling planet in the seventh. So that makes a lot of sense to be like, I'm not a man, you know what I mean? <laughs> to have that Jupiter Rahu thing. Um, so that's, that's also a really interesting one. Okay, you guys, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any uh, feedback or interesting examples of Jupiter Rahu. Okay, take care.